Robin and the bando with the chick. My Jimmy Choo Sando, cause I'm rich. What's going on? What's going on, man? It's your boy Rich and Fake TV. We always working, we always grinding. And today we here for another interview. I got a personal in the building. My boy Eli, man. Pop your shit, dog. What's up, yo? It's your boy Eli Fuller. I come all the way from Greensboro, North Carolina. You know, I'm representing for the fam. Eastside. Mm, I don't know if we can curse on him. Nah, good. You can this. All right, cool, yes. cool. Yeah, Eastside shit, man. You know how we do it. But I'm representing for the whole fam, man. Bet. One step at a time. Bet, 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 bet. So, man, let's talk about that new EP you dropped, you know, about two months ago. Two months? Yeah, about two months. Two months ago. Yeah, man. Run it to us. What's the name of it? Vantage Point EP is kind of a series I'm starting. Uh, I really wanted to start doing a month after month with a project every single month to show my consistency. Um, so look forward to that. I got the second one actually to drop in February and we're working on something this month. Most likely it's probably gonna be just a single or two, but I will always have some content every month for my followers, for sure. Mm -hmm. How would you describe yourself as an artist and how would you describe yourself as a person? You can start off with artists first, because that's what they're here for. Yeah, as an artist, I would describe myself. I like to I like to think up about myself, to be honest. So I'm I'm a pretty bougie artist. I'm pretty like I don't I, I have a, a tolerance level like I, I don't. T it's kind of like I'm opposite of myself as a person to express everything that I did not express being a regular human being. Like, I, I guess I would say it like this, then. During the, like, as a human being, I'm, you know, I'm cool, calm, collective. I don't really talk too much. I don't really get loud. I don't really, I wouldn't say I express myself too much. I, li I like to hold stuff in and actually think about it. But when I'm on the track as an artist, it's kind of like I'm dumping out everything that I was reserved about. Like everything that I didn't say out loud, everything that may not have been necessary in the moment because it might have hurt the next person's feelings. Like all of that, that's I use it as a release from the world. So it's kind of like as above, so below, or something like as the opposites, like opposites attract, like the same thing. It's the, yeah, they, they both help one another. Me being a regular person helps me being an artist. And me being an artist helps me being be a regular human being every day, yeah, for sure. What do you enjoy doing more, making music or, you know, engineering music and putting it together? Making music, making, uh, yeah, I would have to, the, the reason why I started producing was to make my own music, to start doing it for myself because I didn't want to ask for no help. I didn't want nobody to, I didn't want to pay for studio time, pay for beats, like, I could make it. I definitely love making the music like if, if it's just, if it's not all the pressure, if I had a beat made, if I, if I had the choice to sit here and record somebody's song they've written already and everything like that, I would choose myself to sit here and record on my own song and write my own, definitely. I would definitely choose my own music. I love making my own music. That's real, that's real, that's real, that's real. So you came out here to Atlanta to, you know, network with some people and what what do you, you know, what do you get out of coming out here? What, how does it motivate you? So when you go back to your city, it's like, okay, well, let me implement this in my city because we ain't doing this and I seen this, this in their city. Yeah, the opportunity to city, like for one in my city, you could probably drive four or five blocks and you're out of downtown. Like I got lost downtown down here. And the people, the the settings, the, the restaurants, I mean, I've noticed that a lot of celebrities have restaurants down here that I don't even know uh, with the two chains. And then you got the love and hip hop, which, you know, we don't watch, but our shorties tell us all about it. So uh, the inspiration, man, like it's so much more to do down here. I come from a smaller town. so. It's less to do and it's more depression, more tension, because I guess I'm, I'm explaining it like, yeah, it's less space and less things to do. So that creates more tension, depression and everything for the society. So but it's still hard to go back and show them because you got to understand they still sitting in the rain. And I came out here to the sunshine and I got to go back to the rain and show them that sunshine is this. But they don't they don't know how to take that perception because they've never seen it. And a lot of I know a lot of people who haven't even left the city yet, like haven't been anywhere. So 
I feel like a lot of my, my people are living through me, like when it comes to a lot of stuff and a lot of experiences because they see where I came from and they know that I was right beside them or even worse than them in those positions. And when they see me doing better and doing great things, it gives them the inspiration to do better for themselves because they know that they can instead of questioning, you know. That's real. That's real. That's real. That's real. Well, I guess to the people that's like from Greensboro, it might not seem like something, but the people that's not from there, that come there from like different places to go to school, it's just lit. It's just <laughs> next, next level party in there. Like, hey, yeah. it's fun. It's the funnest place to go. Yeah. I don't know what he talking about, but <laughs> I, I know when you just passed through that motherfucker, it's lit as a motherfucker. You ain't going to leave. But when. <laughs> Did you discover, you know, your secret gift that you show the world now for music? <clears throat> well, I've been writing lyrics since I was 11. I guess when I discovered that it was meant for me and that this is my calling is probably when I stopped playing sports. When I decided really that I wanted to run my own team, I wanted to call my own shots, I wanted to be my own boss. And anybody can say that, but it's about what? Like I... um Every everybody that go to college when they teenagers, they uh, parents, uncles, aunts ask them what they want to do, and I really knew what I wanted to do. I just didn't know exactly what field, and so failure really taught me. I would have to say, failure taught me exactly what I needed to do. So a lot of people need to not be afraid to fail. So you you you're a person of mine, so I know a little bit about you outside of the you know music world. Mm -hmm. You're a really smart guy. You know, so was it hard for you to dumb down yourself to make music because what you probably are saying the song might be too complicated for the listener? It is. It's very hard. But that that's a good question because it's all about, well, it, it's a personal struggle because I need to start telling myself or start practicing that this is fun. I need to have fun. Like, I understand I want to say this and say that to wow the brain and make everybody do this, but I need to understand that my listeners might just want to have a good time. I don't be thinking like that. I think that I, I want I want to give this I want to give the listener the best experience they ever had in their life, and I don't want it to come no short. So I guess it was hard for me to dumb myself down and be be more simple about it. But I also understood that that gave me a greater understanding because if I actually poured all those lyrics out and I might not have nothing else to say after that, <laughs> to be honest. And that's, it left me confused a lot. So, yeah. I feel that, I feel that, I feel that. So who were some people you looked up to, you know, growing up in the music world? Well, my first ever favorite artist ever was 50 Cent. Yeah, I was, yeah. I was definitely a 50 Cent fan, G-Unit, the whole crew. Uh, what was that? When I teach you how to stunt drop, that was when I signed on the dotted line. But other than that, after growing up, you know, realizing that, realizing a lot about the music industry and realizing that some of these guys are more than just rappers, I learned a lot. So as I got older, I started listening to more underground artists and people who I could look up and learn more about their life instead of it being so commercialized. Like once the artist gets past a certain point to me, it's kind of like I, I don't even really listen to them no more. The rest of the world got them. But I listen to Currency. Like he's an underground artist that definitely should be praised more than what he is. So I guess I like all the underdogs like Jay Worthy, Larry June. Um, who else would that be? Uh, Freddie Gibbs, definitely. Yeah, you fuck no. with Freddie Gibbs. Yeah, bro. Freddie is raw. <laughs> yeah, you fuck with Freddie Gibbs. I don't know shit about Freddie Gibbs. Man. I just know what I hear on YouTube about Freddie Gibbs. Man. Yeah, yeah, Why you yeah. fuck with Freddie Gibbs? Though? What's the smell of Freddie Gibbs? I don't know about Freddie Gibbs. He, he's just gangster, bro. Like, he don't, he don't really care. He'll say it. Like, yeah, you the first nigga. say it. Freddie Gibbs? Yes. Why they talk bad about Freddie Gibbs? Like, he ain't like that, dude. They say ain't Freddie nobody, Gibbs. I don't know. I have no idea. <laughs> Maybe because he don't give, he don't give a fuck. Like, <laughs> He really a talk shit. They just put him on power. Uh, what's that series? Force. The Force series. So, uh, yeah. Nah, my boy said he fuck with Freddie Gibbs, man. Yeah, he Listen. was beefing with Gunna. Nah, I don't think he was beefing with Gunna. I just think that it was some goofy shit happened. Yeah. But look. Yeah. That man said he fuck with Freddie Gibbs. This is the first nigga I heard say he fuck with Freddie Gibbs. Hey, 
I heard I I never I can't say I heard none of his music. I think I heard a little snippets and I can see mm -hmm. why you might fuck with him as an artist with his mm -hmm. rapping shit. He could rap his ass off. But I don't like as his antics and little shit he be doing. I don't know. Man. I don't know. I feel, it, <laughs> I feel it. I don't know. Personally though, Freddie, I ain't no I shot to you, it. Jack. Keep getting your money, keep doing you. Yeah. Um, nah, that's awesome though, man. Keep going though, my bad. Mm -hmm. Uh no, nah, I mean that's pretty much it, man. I, uh with with all my artists though, I rock brands, I I said I uh support. So I'm gonna have my own merchandise and all of that too. So I support my artists, man. Anybody I listen to, anybody that come to my studio, all of that. I support. Nah, that's real. That's real. real. So you said just studio. You have your own studio. Uh home setup. Home I setup. got uh, you know, the whole MacBook, everything mm -hmm. that the studio has, I just don't have a building. Yeah, no, nah, that'll come. That'll come. That'll yeah. come. So let me ask you this question, man. How does bad clout, the wrong clout, tear down a neighborhood. If you got a nigga from your hood rapping and he got clout, everybody following him, you know what I'm saying? But he dissing a lot of other people. How does that affect the people around mm. him in the real flesh of that? If you ever experienced something like that working with different artists? Uh, yeah, I have. <clears throat> I have. As a producer, you might find yourself in the middle of a lot of stuff going on, but you never really act like nobody ever actually involves you, which is great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm telling yeah, you, yeah. like I've been niggas call me yo. They over there, yeah. like, no, that's, that's, <laughs> leave me alone, that's, leave that's him alone, yeah. like. But really, I don't. I mean, every rapper signs up for what they sign up for. That's on them. Truth being told, if you know you disrespected somebody. Then you handle it. But the point is, I feel like it's no such thing as bad clout. Clout is clout. I truly feel like there's no such thing as bad clout. Even if it's good clout, you're gonna have some bad spots somewhere. It's yeah. gonna happen, you know. So with bad, bad clout, clout, I mean, bad clout is different though. What you? What do you like? Well, what, do what I would be a bad clout? What would be an example of bad clout? I just want to know. Bad clout is a situation where you got one person in a group. That's you know doing this thing, doing this rap thing, but he he probably might be shut tripping and dissing other neighborhoods and shit. Mm -hmm. So every everywhere you move around this nigga, you got the whole city kind of mad at you because he on some rap shit, some clout shit. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Yeah, he doing views in other states mm -hmm. and other other every other states are listening to the music and fucking with it. But mm -hmm. in his home state where he still got to move around with the same people that mm -hmm. came up with him. It's like it's putting a bullseye on niggas back. Right. You understand me? So that's what I'm like. That's bad clout to me. Yeah, because that's what's happening in my city, man. It's I ain't gonna name no names, but it's a group in my city that if you just join them, you you got a target on your head. Exactly. I'm talking about you might you might just shake a hand. Oh them, yeah, they come, they know you with them. It's a rap. Yeah. And bad clout, like, yeah, that's that's real shit. So how does it tear down the hood though? Tear down homies and Mess it, things up. I know people die from it. I think it builds chaos, man. It has a lot of people turning against each other in their own hood. It has a lot of people not liking the city, and it doesn't make our city look good as a whole because other people from other places just want to see the authentic, or either they either they want to see the hood where shit is happening, or they just want to see some authentic people talking about it. And as soon as we show some flaw or some pussy shit that, that everybody's doing. Don't nobody want to rock with us no more. We made a bad name for the city. You messed up everybody's chance, really, I feel like. So I understand that now. Like, it could cause innocent people to get hurt. <sighs> a lot of stuff. So, but at the same time, if you do have that platform of messing it up, then you got that platform of making it better. So it could always be fixed. Anything, any mess can be clean, the way I look at it. That's a good way to look at anything yeah. negative, really, especially mm -hmm. any mess could be clean. Right. That's right. That's right. So I know you said it in the intro. You're from Greensboro, North Carolina. So tell me what it's like growing up in Greensboro, North Carolina. Well, I'm from the east side of Greensboro, over there by a and You know, it's the college. It's a whole bunch of students, you know. Really, they, they tearing a lot of the hoods down, you know, building up new stuff. It's not really as bad as it used to be. But, you know, anybody that's still around really been there. And shit still happens every day, but it still ain't like it used to be, man. I don't really do too much hanging around too much more because I got a lot going on and I didn't really move to another side just to, you know, follow my dream and, you know, focus on my career, man. Because I grew up in that hood and, you know, I couldn't stay there forever, you feel me? So. Cool, cool, cool. So let's go a little bit in depth about how was it growing up, you know, on the east side of Greensboro, North Carolina? 
So I went to Harrison Middle School. I'm with the Dudley on the east side. You know, it was a whole bunch of gang banging, a whole bunch of fights. Fights was normal. Back then when I was growing up, it wasn't a lot of guns, people killing each other. It was more so fights, jumping, people catching you, lacking at the club, late night stuff. I mean, it was a lot of stuff. I mean, you really had to watch your back unless you was from there. If you ain't even from there, you might not even be able to walk down the right street. Like, seriously, we, we probably won't let you. So, I mean, it was tough growing up, but if you're from there, it's kind of like a homeland, you know? So people would think because they're not from there that, you know, it's bad, but the people that's from here, we just like home to us. So, you know, it's not really as bad. It's just like any other hood, you know, nothing major. That's dope. So what are some important values you took from your neighborhood growing up? Really, it was just really just having the fellows, man. Like we really just had each other. Like we ain't really had no money growing up. We sometimes we had to put in, put in our own thing to get one meal for the whole crew. You know what I'm saying? And uh, that took that that showed me how to hustle. The struggle really showed me a lot too. Like I learned how to to hustle and really gamble. I say I ain't gonna say like money, but take chances. That's why I made Paradise Records which is, you know, our saying is gamble, the gamble team, that's what we call ourselves. So I learned, that's what really what I took from it because growing up on my side of town, it's, it's not like a, a, a rich side or anything. So we had to learn a lot, take chances, for real. That's real, that's real, that's real. So around that time growing up, uh, what were some of your hobbies? Were you already doing music? Were y'all doing music? Or y'all was more into like the, you know, other things? Right, yeah, so I played sports really my whole life since I was like seven years old, I was playing football, well, I'm sorry, baseball. Then got to middle school, joined basketball and football. Uh, high school, it was just baseball and basketball. Like I played sports my whole life, you know, and music for me was really like, you know, I just needed uh, something to get me away from the world I was living in. So I always wrote lyrics. Then when I turned, I think I was 16, I started engineering, I think it was, 16 or 15. Then 21, I went to school for music production. So other than that, before I was into the music, it was really sports, man, I ain't even gonna lie to you. And other than that, I mean, streets. Streets always there though. I try to stay away from the streets by going to the sports, you know? Keep, keep me active, out of trouble. I was never really a troublemaker growing up, to be honest. Anybody that know me would tell you that, you know? So did you see a change in your community, you know, once like music, when the music scene kind of blew up in North Carolina, when the baby started taking off and things like that, where, was that a good influence on the city or was it a bad influence on the city? I think it was a great influence that I might change my mind, honestly, after I explain. But thinking of it off top, I think it was a great experience because it provided us a lot of motivation, inspiration. Like it's it's people of all ages trying to get back into the game or eat. people who used to rap that maybe when they was 21 and now they 28, 29, now they're trying to tighten back up. It just really inspired because we know we got a light shining on us. And I hate to say that it had to take that, but uh, yeah, it, it was a really good look. I, we appreciate the baby for that one. And people need to really appreciate J. Cole because he the one who was the first one out of North Carolina as far as this era. You know, we got uh, P.D. Pablo and who else? I can't like, remember Like name. J. Cole kind of was like, I, I ain't gonna say he was already kind of like, um, but his come up is a little different from the baby come up. The baby is more relatable. Which, won't you mm -hmm. say that? Yeah, I would definitely agree with that. You know, Cole got signed to Rockefeller. Yeah, you know so. what I'm saying? So he was already coming in different, but with, with the baby probably being somebody that if you stayed in his, his side or in his area you went to school with, seeing somebody like that make it with the music, when did, when did other people start, you know, coming up with their rap groups and start taking off their rap careers? And then like, how did mm -hmm. that start forming? If you understand me, mm. I think honestly that came more so like the really the Atlanta, Atlanta movement really sparked a lot of that with uh, Migos. What's the uh, quality control? That whole movement, like, yeah, yeah. Um, I don't, I don't know who the baby raps with. I don't know who he's like beside. I don't know how that really inspired groups, 
yeah. so much, but everybody in my city really want to be that guy. Like yeah. people don't really know how to get in groups, play their role, and let another person shine for now till they get theirs. It don't really work like that in my city. Yeah, I don't know why though. Yeah. Well, I ain't gonna say groups. I'm gonna say, you know, when him and Stunner for Vegas connected, and I know mm-hmm. Stunner for Vegas is more so, not from Greensboro, but he's not too far from, from you. Salisbury, from Salisbury, I Salisbury. Think. It's like two yeah. hours away from Greensboro, right? Uh, hour. Hour away. 30 minutes. Not yeah. Even. Yeah. So seeing somebody like that blow up out of that small town in Greensboro mm-hmm. is much bigger. Mm-hmm. Uh, what, I ain't gonna say, okay, what kind of taste does that leave in other Greensboro artists' mouth? when it comes to like how they're marketing themselves as artists and all that stuff. Mm. Wow, honestly, being an engineer and hearing that question, it kind of lets me know they probably don't like that because a lot of people are trying to copy their flow and be exactly like them guys. And they might be trying to feed back off of their energy to make their own, which is kind of like clout chasing, whatever they want to call it. So I don't think it's really a good thing when it comes to how we taking it? I just think it's a good thing because of what happened. But people, there's a lot of haters in my city, man. I ain't gonna lie. I ain't gonna lie to you. They don't like that. So I, truthfully, I don't. I ain't name dropping. I ain't gonna say too much. But I've, I know people who, because I come from that that area. So I know people who like these niggas, and I know people who don't want to see these niggas around. So it's like. When you from that city, you got people who like, ah, they hate on him. Like, ah, he ain't really this, he ain't really that. I known him before this and before that. Stuff like that will really throw off people's perspective of the whole thing. But I think those are some really talented guys. And I mean, I don't understand why people would hate, but some people might be salty about that, man, because they might have thought Greensboro, because we're a bigger city and we got technically have more going on that we were supposed to have a light on us, but who's making real noise like you know i don't know but a couple of guys who really making noise out of my city you know so that is what it is i feel that so what is the sound out of greensboro like how are the beats made how what kind of um melodies do original rappers use from greensboro in their music Mm-hmm. Like, give me an artist that I could, that you could say that this is real Greensboro. Everything he's saying, uh, how his beat is, how his videos is, like he's mm-hmm. showing, like this is how we come. Right. Well, I've been where I work a lot with uh, somebody by the name of Trapway Trey. He uh, owns YTN Records in North Carolina with us. And every time he comes through the studio, he's always he always has an idea about something from scratch. Like he he's very we're very serious on our 808s hitting. Nice, nice, good bass hitting. Really simple though. Like I can, I can literally put a, a good 808 pattern on bass for those that don't know. With a nice clap, with a hi hat, and it can all be just as simple. It's really more so about how we rap on the beat versus the beat, because I don't like a lot of other like everybody else, the West Coast, the up north. We have like the most simplest beats. Like New York beats are pretty much more complex, and West Coast is more instruments than it is bass and drums is what i would say so i say if i was to put it in a nutshell we have we are like the coast where we do drums more so than melodies because i'll sit here and i'll play what i think might be a great melody a flute saxophone i love all types of instruments but that just be like that's too much like i don't need all of that mm-hmm. so we the simpler the beat really the better i would have to say really Oh, that's that's super dope. So you you do music and you also you also an engineer as well. Mm-hmm. What is it like, you know, doing both? It's kind of like pitching and catching or pitching and hitting. Playing for both teams, doing playing different roles at the same time. Like I have a, I honestly have a problem trying to sit here and make a beat and then rap to it right then and there. Now that's fun and I, it's not hard, it's just continuously doing it day by day. I have to literally sit here and I'll make beats this week, next week I'm just writing, next week I'm just rapping. Like, because when I, I, I'm an engineer, so I, I record tons of artists, I'm always dealing with people, people, and I notice the edge these artists have by having somebody there that can engineer for them, make the beat for them. They, these guys really just focus on rapping. And that's that's a blessing to me. And so I try to my best to put myself in that position myself because ain't nobody 
doing it for me. I'm making my own beats. I'm engineering my own sound. I'm writing my own lyrics. I'm recording it in my crib, all of that, man. So when you hear me, you hear me. That's it. So how would you describe the networking market in North Carolina when it comes to like all people that play a position in the entertainment field, working with each other and going to different cities and finding different artists and just kind of like building up the industry in North Carolina? <clears throat> well, a lot of rappers, a lot of rappers really stick to their stick to their guns. Like some people won't approach other artists because they might not be cool with who they cool with. It's so much animosity and tension down there that it's kind of hard for people to like know which direction they want to go because it's kind of. I mean, I guess I would have to say they're kind of scared of bumping into the wrong person or something like that. So the networking is kind of a tight window. So it's like. I guess if you know what direction you want to go, then you stick to that direction. But it's not really a music scene, honestly, in Greensboro and in the triad area like where I'm from. But if you go up to that Charlotte way, I've heard it's pretty good, you know. So how are, how are you, you know, stepping your blueprint on the music scene in North Carolina and Greensboro, you know, kind of like letting people know, like, this is how we come in and this is what it is. Branching out, I uh, got a show face, get my face out there. And I really try my best not to sound like anybody from my city. I know it may sound crazy that I'm representing my city, but I sound different. Either way, it doesn't matter. I still want to stand out. I'm still going to have my own flow. But at the end of the day, I come from this city and I'm going to speak on and discuss everything that they talking about. I'm just going to do it in a different way, because if the city ain't blew up yet, then obviously that means we're doing something wrong. So. I'm here to bring my own flavor, my own taste to it. And uh, I'm going to get my face out here, get my name out here. And I'm, I'm going to tell everybody about my city, my side of town. You know, it's the east side. You feel me? Yeah. So I, I know, like, you know, negative music and drill music and all that stuff. People like to listen to it. I'm, I'm one of them. I like mm -hmm. listening to it, too. Even if I'm, you know, I ain't living that lifestyle, mm -hmm. I like listening to the music. Mm -hmm. So I'm. is there any, like, type of artists out of your city that you know has that type of sound and music that people's jumping on it might be really really negative but the city like it any names you want to drop yeah um i mean you know i'm always sticking to the artists i'm working with man uh guap lingo guap lingo he is really uh he really spitting some facts he really bout that he really doing it he got some haters i mean you ain't doing it right if you ain't got it so yeah, Guap Lingo is definitely the one to look at out of Greensboro, man. Um, he got some real drill, drill tracks. He got it all kind of. We we do a, a whole bunch of different type of stuff. But yeah, if you want to hear him talk about talk that talk, talk that shit, then you need to go look up Guap Lingo for real. Yeah. That's that's super dope. So let's break the cycle. Other than the people that you're working with, who are some other artists that you probably don't know nothing about? They don't know that you even know anything about them, but you you see what they're doing, you like it, mm -hmm. and you would like to work with them and you know get some going with them. I got a couple. Uh, well, off top, I know I want to work with uh BJ, BJ Frazy. Uh, he got some heat coming out of my city, Greensboro. He got a video. He just dropped. It's a uh, he standing outside rapping in the, on the mic, man. It's, he killed that. Um, I would love to work with uh Sneezo, Sneezo Gotti, Sneezo Quick. Excuse me. That, uh, he really upon that pressure. He, you know, he know how we coming about it, but I gotta shout him out, man. Sneeze old Gotti, Sneeze old quick. However you wanna look at it. Them guys really applying that pressure, man. Um, my boy, uh, uh, you said, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna have to name one more person I've been working with, but we, we, we just getting started. My boy Zoe, War Ready. Oh, that's my dog. Yeah, that's my brother Zoe, right there. Zoe, Zoe, Zoe. That's my dog. <laughs> yeah, he, he coming with that sauce too. He got a clothing line coming that's out too. That's my brother. He embroidery and everything. Like he got it all set up. So, nah, Zoe actually, um, I believe Zoe made the logo I use on my business card, and he made the logo I use on Richard Faith TV. What? So shout out to Zoe. That's my brother. Yeah, I use that logo. That's my guy. Yeah, yeah, that Zoe's a talented person. Yeah, um, we got a lot of stuff dropping, man. Who else coming out of my city? One more. I got some young cats, man. They 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 need to drop. A lot of guys got a lot of unreleased music that they're not dropping. You know, 
And that come from not believing in ourselves. And that's why I say also about the networking when it comes to North Carolina. Like a lot of those guys are rapping so much, coming to the studio consistently and not putting music out. And that's a problem. They don't understand that. Don't quote me on this, mm -hmm. but I feel like this is, you know, kind of accurate from, you know, from the people I know that do, you know, that's into the music industry, that engineer and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So I'm not going to say that it's necessarily easy to get next to some of the A-class artists here in Atlanta when you're an engineer and you're in the studio. But I feel like if you're in the right studios, you might, you know, be in certain rooms with certain people and they'd be like, damn, this dope. You know what I'm saying? They can hear your sound and, mm -hmm. and take you off. One of my little guys, I can call him my little guy, one of my little homies, I'm a little older than him, but we went to college together, SAE, um, his name, FMF Zay. And I believe he got placed on Lil Baby album, and he's an engineer. He make beats and stuff, and I just think he just got that by just being in the studio. Mm -hmm. So I say all that to say, what is it like in North Carolina? Is it easy to get next to the baby in Son of Four Vegas and Toots Tussie, you know, for them to hear your beats and your music? Uh, honestly, I think as an engineer, well, only I haven't really, I haven't been around the baby. I haven't been around Stunner. I've been around uh, Barlito. I've been around the whole um, QMG. I've been around those guys. And it's honestly not, I wouldn't say it's, it's hard for them to get to get around them. I say it would be hard for them to hear your sound, for them to hear what you got going on. I guess it's all about timing because when those guys are in the studio, they are working. And, you know, being an engineer, I really, I went in there. It was kind of like, I, all I did was Barlito's verse. They had like two other verses on the song. And he went in there, he just said, you know, I'm ready. We, we recorded it and that was it. I didn't even mix it. It probably took 10 minutes, if that. And after that, it came in there, we chopped it up, everything. I mean, I, if, if that was my lane of music, then I guess I would have looked at it differently. I guess I did have the opportunity to do it, but that wasn't my lane of music. I'm not really, you know, desperate to be just anywhere. And... So I guess that was easy because all I did was necessar necessarily just walk in there, you know? So, yeah, it's pretty easy if you are a engineer. Producer and an engineer is two different things. So I definitely say it is harder for you to get on as a producer because they don't care about it. Like, they don't really care about producers in studios because you got more power than they're really asking for. They need you to come in there and record, and that's it. They come in there with their beats and stuff. And because I've, I've applied for so many studios and I've talked to so many studio owners, executives, whatever, and they all tell me that they'll even say it in the application. We do not need producers. So if you're an engineer and you rap like you, you really got a good chance of getting somewhere in this industry, especially if you put in the footwork, especially. And for the people who might not know the difference between an engineer and a producer, Tell us. Yeah, so the the difference between an engineer and a producer uh, pretty much is the difference between beat making and sound or sound engineering. So a producer would be the one who makes the beat or he'd be the one who orchestrates the beat. Like he might say, put something here, take something away there, add a kick, add a 808, add something. An engineer is the one who makes the voice sound good. So when you're singing, you want that auto tune, you want that reverb, the delays, all of that. That's what the engineer is for. And there are different types of engineers, but we'll, that's not important. But that's the best difference between it. It's just sound, I'm um, sorry, vocals and music is the difference. Um, yeah, man. So um, what could we expect, man? You know, this is the like then the, like the first quarter going on the second mm -hmm. quarter of the year. You know what I'm saying? I know you've been putting in works. What could we expect from you? You know, the rest of the year. More music, more projects. Expect to see my face a lot more. Expect to see me out. Uh, if you see me out, if you like my music, you see me out. Don't be afraid to approach. I am cool. I am approachable. Um, I want to interact more with people who actually like what I got going on and like my business or whatever you want to call it. Um, I'm going to get into the merchandising with clothing. Uh, not exactly sure on what I know we're going to do shirts, but I want to make sure I know exactly what clothing we're going to do so I can tell you guys. Other than that, I mean, websites, just pretty much legitimizing everything for the uh, upcoming years this year. And uh, if 
you like what's going on now, then I suggest you jump on shit because it's gonna change in the future. Just being honest with you. Cool, man. And look, man, I appreciate you, you know, coming to the city, you know, stopping by and doing an exclusive interview with us, my guy. You know, it's been, been some years since we've seen each other in person, mm -hmm. man, so it's always good. Let's keep this interview thing going up, man. Let's, sure. let's, let's make some classes, dog, man. Right. Um, I appreciate you for coming through. Is there anything you want to say before we slide? Uh, yeah, man, I want to shout out Young King Empire, uh, the clothing line that's coming out. My guy, May Jack, Tone May Jack, going to be running that. I got to shout that out. Um, shout out to the city, Greensboro, you already know once again. Shout out to my mans in Miami, my man Q. Uh, he got the producing thing going down there too, Jets and Productions. Uh, shout out to my whole family. You already know the Fuller family. I mean, that's that's pretty much it. If I forgot you, I ain't forget you. Bet, bet, bet. And I'ma shout out to my nigga Tone too. Shout out to my nigga Majak. That's my brother, Zal Lush. Shout out to my boy Yao. Mm -hmm. Shout out to everybody, man. Sure. And this is your boy Rich and Faith TV. We out. Mm -hmm.